<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very exciting tour. It's a 2022 Lincoln Navigator L Reserve. What I want to know, is this the mom car over the Cadillac Escalade or the Jeep Grand Wagoneer? This is a luxury full-size SUV. The reserve behind me has an MSRP of $101,000, and I have brought three car seats, a stroller, and a giant cup to put this car to the ultimate test. If it's your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly, and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom and a certified child passenger safety tech. All right, let's get started, and let's sink our teeth into this 2022 Lincoln Navigator L Reserve. Okay, so the Navigator got a total update in 2019, and since then, I really think she has been competing with the Escalade in a big way. Let's start by kind of breaking down this exterior, and then we will dive into it. Front end, loving what I'm seeing right here. I think this Lincoln logo looks darling, and I love all these little baby mini Lincoln logos around it. I think it's so cohesive. I love all the chrome. Comment below what you think about chrome. I think it really elevates this to look like a luxury full-size SUV. Loving everything I'm seeing. The headlights are a little blah, to be completely honest with you, but there's so much going on with the grill that I think like I'm almost okay with it. All right, and then let's take a look at this side profile of the Lincoln Navigator. We'll start with our rims, 22 inch rims, which I'm gonna be honest, you need big rims for a big car like this. So I think that actually balances out the car and looks amazing. Navigator badging right here. And then moving to the rest of the side profile. So we have a strong belt line that goes here and then some great chrome detailing. I actually like, if you notice this, I like the chrome here, but the fact that they didn't put chrome here and then they just added it on the roof rails. I think that kind of like, elevates and elongates its body lines. And I think it looks really great. We have some more chrome pieces down here. And then we move into the L version. So the Navigator comes in two wheelbase options, the L and the regular. The L is 12 inches bigger in the trunk. So that's where you're seeing this very big, some would say bus, like window back here. That's because we have a lot of trunk space we're working with. Okay, and then we moved on to the back end of this Lincoln Navigator L. Back end is not my favorite. I just think like this chrome bar and this light bar that go all the way across, I just think it ages it just a bit compared to how updated the rest of the car feels. But let's hop into the interior. Let's talk about the cubbies, the cup holders, the car seats, and really see if this is a good family car. All right, so here's a shot of me in this 2022 Lincoln Navigator. Driver's comfort features I'm really liking. So let's start by breaking down the door panel. Door is huge, first of all. I actually think the door panel is very well designed and offers a lot of cubby spaces and versatility. If we start up here, this is all of our seat adjustments. Definitely will take some getting used to because I feel like the majority of the cars have them here, but it is like, I've never seen so many ways to adjust a seat. Like thank goodness for the memory seats because you'll literally never be able to get it back in the same spot twice. So has memory seats. We also have massaging seats on this trim level. And then we go into all of our windows, our um, power folding mirrors, and then into our cubby spaces. Really great cubbies. If you look, it's wide, it's long. There's like two designated cup holder spots. I mean, X marks the spot. We love to see it. Okay, let me get you on the other side. And we'll talk about some of the safety technology and convenience features. Okay guys, let's talk about some of the safety, convenience, and technology features and comfort features that are found in this Lincoln Navigator. I'm gonna start by talking about our steering wheel. I'm actually loving this like brownish color with this beige interior. I think it's a little less harsh than just like adding black, but it's not too crazy. So I actually really love this interior color and design. If we start by going over our digital dash, it's completely digital and it's very, very easy to read and simplified. We also then have another screen right here. Now the only thing that I'm not obsessed with is how these two do feel a little separate, especially for the price tag of $100,000 and looking at cars like the Grand Wagoneer and like the Escalade, their screens are definitely more integrated and kind of flow a little bit better. But taking that aside, I actually really do appreciate the ease of use of these displays. So like I said, the digital dash, very easy to read. On the steering wheel, we have a lot of great, easy to find steering wheel buttons, anything from like our automated cruise control to our Bluetooth. And then we have some nice chrome details throughout the steering wheel as well. I mean, I just think like the steering wheel, I think the car is honestly beautiful. If we look into the display, like I said, very easy to use, completely touchscreen. We've got audit, we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation, all the things. And I just like love the little touches and designs that they've integrated into this car. So like if I add, so if like if I touch something, do you see it like makes those little stars come up? And then same thing, if I go to adjust the heat or the air, it like has like little bubbles. Now I hate that there isn't a knob and this is the only thing I can do because it takes a minute, but I think it's like kind of a nice pretty touch. Heated seats and ventilated seats as well as a heated steering wheel in this trim level and just a lot of nice fun things. 
So yeah, I just like love the design. I think there's so much more chrome than usual. And I actually like the replacement of chrome instead of just having gloss black. Cause as I've said before, gloss black is very hard to keep clean. So I actually really do like the car. The Navigator comes loaded with standard safety features. They have everything from emergency brake assist, pre-collision assistant with emergency braking. And they offer the Lincoln Copilot 360, which offers a host of driver assistant features to prevent collision. Things like enhanced active park assist, lane keep assist, and forward and reverse sensing. They also have blind spot and a surround view camera available. Okay, so before I get into more of like the cubby spaces and some of like the nice aesthetics of the car, I do want to mention like really comparing this to the Escalade or the Wagoneer or even some of just the other luxury cars out there, I do think there's some features that they left off, which is just like a little shocking to me. The first being a rear view camera. So this is a huge, large, full-size SUV that's expected to carry a lot of passengers. So the fact that on this trim, it may be available on higher trim levels, but I don't think it is actually, that there's no rear view camera so I can see out out the back without having passengers obstruct my view that's kind of shocking to me i was also really hoping to see a blind spot camera that would appear on my dash instead of just having like the little cars on the side of the mirror like i said just comparing it to other vehicles of its class those features are lacking in my opinion okay so moving on let's get to the cubby space and the cup holders we start with this little open area down here i love it like it even has like a built-in divider tray perfect for like throwing sunglasses cell phones keys, snacks for your kids, and just like keeping things a little bit more organized. So I actually love the shifter being up here kind of integrated underneath the vents because it actually gives us so much more space for cubbies, for things that we need. Loving this wide cubby right here with a USB, a USB-C, and a 12 volt on top of having a wireless charger. You can also easily close it. A little bit of a change collector right here, two cup holders, which look really nice. Drive modes, auto hold, and parking brake is all found next to it. And then we get into our center console, which is actually a really nice size. Here, do you want me to put a Starbucks Grande in for reference? hey -o. I mean, that's a decent size center console. I'm pretty impressed by that. One more thing I want to say before we, or two more things I want to say before we get to the second row. Panoramic sunroof, love it, beautiful. Seats in this car, they look kind of funky. They kind of look like those gamer chairs. They are beyond comfortable. These are probably some of the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. They are so plush. I love all the different ways that you can adjust them. And I'm not even like a huge massaging seat person, but in the Navigator, they're subtle enough to just kind of keep your body moving. So like if you are on a long road trip, these are the freaking seats I'd want to be in. I mean, I'm genuinely really impressed with the comfort of the seats. I think they're not that good looking, but they are beyond comfortable. Okay, let's get to the second and third row and talk about all these car seats I brought. All right, Elle, here's a shot of me in the second row of the Navigator. Check out this clearance. I mean, this seat is set for myself, a tall driver. I have so much knee clearance. I have great head clearance. We have ceiling vents in the second and the third row. You know who doesn't have that? The Wagoneer, so point to the Navigator. Down here, they lose me just a little bit. These cup holders right here on the ground, I'm not loving. I feel as though, like, would it really have been that hard to put them here on the door because like this is annoying and what i hate about this this is so specific but if you get me you get me in the bench seat they also put the cup holders right there so like then if you have someone in the bench they're literally kicking the cups so like i just don't love that design we do have two usbs an outlet and a 12 volt right here which is exciting climate control leather back pockets um no sunshades also which i feel as though for a hundred thousand dollars you could put sunshades in so the Navigator comes in both a bench and captain's chairs. I'm doing the captain's chairs today, but if you want to see the bench, good news for you, I've already done the tour of a bench. You can find it in the description box below. Okay, I have brought with me three car seats. I have a Kleck Foomp installed rear facing and a Kleck Foomp installed forward facing on the other side to give you an idea of spacing. I have this seat set for myself at a six foot tall adult. And with this rear facing car seat, I have plenty of clearance. We love to see it. Okay, so before I go any further, let's just break down the car seat setup in the Navigator. So with the captain's chairs, in both captain's chairs, I have lower anchors and tether anchors. In the third row, I have two sets of lower anchors on both outboard seats and tether anchors on all three seats in the third row. So on this car with the captain's chairs, that's a total of four sets of lower anchors and five tether anchors. That, my friends, offers some versatility, some flexibility, some things we love to see. Some of the other full-size SUVs like the Suburban, the Tahoe, the Escalade do not offer lower anchors in the third row. The Wagoneer offers one set, but for this one to have as much as it does, from a hardware standpoint, the best car seat setup 
out of the full-size SUVs. And if this car, if you like this car and you're wanting to find a little bit more affordable option, the Ford Expedition sits on the same platform since Ford owns Lincoln. So the cars are essentially the same. The Navigator is just spruced up, a little bit more expensive with some of her interior design and technology features. But from a functionality standpoint, they function very similarly. Okay, so let me show you how you access the third row of the Navigator. Now, whether I had the bench or the captain's chairs, they both work like this. So obviously with a forward-facing car seat in the captain's chairs, you could just kind of slither around it. But if you had the bench seat and you wanted to access that third row with car seats, you would do what's called the car seat friendly tilt. You just pull up on this lever, tilt, it tilts, and slides and then you're able to access the third row with a car seat installed again this works on both the captain's and the bench seat and it will not affect the integrity of the car seat and it is safe to use okay here's a shot of me in the third row of the 2022 lincoln navigator l and i'm super comfortable actually in this third row the car is very spacious feels very airy i have ceiling vents my own light um, USB cup holder cubby spaces, and I can even recline my seats, which is pretty exciting for third row. In the third row, like I told you, we have two sets of lower anchors on both outboard seats, tether anchors across the back. I have this Kleck booster seat that does get installed with the lower anchors. I love boosters that install with the lower anchors because then it keeps them in place and makes them not a projectile if there's not a child sitting in the seat. So I love being able to install that back here. Um, and as you can see, this child still has plenty of room, some good leg clearance, even with this seat pushed all the way back, they still have enough room to hang their feet. Um, middle seat is tiny, but it's actually better than some of the other ones that I've seen. And I appreciate that the Lincoln puts in middle head restraints. I've talked about this so many times, but any of the GM cars, the Escalade, the Chevy, the GMC do not put middle head restraints in, making middle seating positions like so much more dangerous than their other seating positions. It's ridiculous that they're not in there. So good job for Lincoln for putting that in there. And I'm honestly just really impressed with the space and the comfort features that are back here. I mean, this is just, it's, I'm, I, I love this car. I think it's a great option. Okay, let's take a look at this trunk space. I have an Up Baby Vista stroller that I've put in here and it obviously fits. I do think though for some of the other extended wheelbase options, there are bigger trunk sizes. The Wagoneer is much bigger. I think the Escalade's a little bit bigger. So a little small on that front, but obviously still plenty of trunk space for my stroller and for like a week's worth of groceries. So still good to see. Let me take this thing out of here. Underneath here, a little something something, a little something to talk about, a little, so a little storage area. And then what I love is you can control both the second and the third row from the trunk, which I think is so great for busy parents. So you could just put down like third row right, and it will automatically fold the seats. And what I love is it's a press and release. Like your girl does not have time to sit there and hold a button. Absolutely not. Okay guys, so that's going to wrap up this 2022 Lincoln Navigator Tour. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you're currently car shopping and stressed about the process, I got you. We have so many resources over at thecaromofficial.com to make the car buying process easier. You can find the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.